you, 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 you. We have so much to catch up on. Let's not waste any time. So, Sita knows the truth about her parents' death. She knows that Lerua was involved in the death of her parents. And it's so sad because after everything that they've been through, breaking up, getting back together, Sile having to climb mountains and almost getting mugged and having to shack up at someone's house just to find him and they find each other, finally are in a position to be together and then this bombshell is dropped. And it's done by none other than our troublemaker, Kadi, who didn't even tell the whole truth. He lied. He knows he's the one that killed Sile's parents, but he's now making uh Lurua the villain in this whole story i mean i knew this man didn't like Lurua. i knew that didn't like Lurua, but i don't know he hated him like this guy hates Lurua's guts right and i mean what i'm also like confused about as well is the fact that that didn't even say that Lurua is the one that shot sisle so i don't know if he was just like too focused on covering himself and making Lurua the the evil one in the story but Sisha knows, and Tladi is the one that told him. It seems like Tladi really wants to destroy Liruo. Him and his new girl, Nyakalo. I feel like they really hate this guy's guts and they just really want to destroy his life. Not only him alone, but also his mother, Moredro. Because, I mean, they went and stole and poached Liruo's crew, and they're now uh, running their own cattle raiding crew. Which is doing really well, actually. I mean, we saw Tladi there rolling up in his new rod. He's dressing up in Gucci, you know. He's, he's being the man that he's always wanted to be, you know. The man who is on top. And they didn't only just steal his crew, but Tladi's dad managed to get into the top four after Lerua fumbled killing Bandile. So they removed Moretro from the top four and now Tladi's dad is there. And I mean, the worst betrayal of all is Nyakalo and Tladi getting together. I feel like this is such a terrible combination, a dangerous combination for Lerua because both these guys don't like him at all. But anyway, back to Okabeni Farm. Nolanda has left the house. She has taken her child, packed up her bags and left because Bandila refused to sell the farm. And I mean... I sort of understand where she's coming from. It's really, really becoming unsafe in Okabeni. They literally shut up their house and, and Sikhle ended up getting like, severely injured. So it's really such a huge concern for her to keep living in this house. So she's left after Banile decided that Diana is not selling the farm anymore to Bablamini. And of course, this infuriated Bablamini on top of the fact that Sikhle denied the marriage to Kwanele. So he's asking for his Lobala money back and he's asking for his 2 million rand back. And another thing is really seeing Kwanele in this episode. How sad he was, how worried he was about Sile and Mabilamini telling him like, dude, you need to move on. Do you know how many women want to be in your position? And I completely agree with him. Like, Sile has been so disrespectful to Kwanele. And Gwanele has only just wanted to love her, been there for her. So, I mean, he, he needs to move on. I agree with Babla Mini. Gwanele needs to move on. Because there's nothing there anymore. There's really nothing there anymore. So, guys, there's been, like, so much drama happening in this show. Listen, I know what I said about this show being boring and predictable. Listen, all of that is gone. Because this story is so good the plots the twists are so unexpected i don't know if they were just trying to like start the show off slowly get you into like a slow rhythm before they like packed on the heat because it has been plot twist after plot twist after plot twist and i'm loving it this is the kind of show that you wanna watch every single week you can't wait for wednesday to come around so i'm very very excited to see how the story unfolds it is becoming so difficult to try and predict what's going to happen. But let me give it a shot. 
Here are Outlaw's predictions. It's time for the showdown, baby. And you know when I step into it, it's about to go down. Okay, ish, there's so much happening in the story right now. And where we ended off the last two episodes, it kind of left us in like a limbo, not really knowing what's going to happen. So I'm just left to go and dig up. Guys... It's summer, it's hot, and the mosquitoes are back. <sighs> but anyway, I'm left to dig back up the plots that are still unfolding. One of which is the fact that Bandila is not dead. He's still a threat to the top four and the whole cattle raiding crew because he's leading the farmers in protecting their farms. So I think that they're still going to try and organize another hit on him. And I think this is where Bablamini is going to also get involved because remember that Bablamini still wants Okabeni farm and he had like, he had it in his lap, in his, in his, in the palm of his hands, offering such a sweet deal to Bandile, which Bandile declined. And I understand because it's really like more than just about safety. Bandile is thinking about the legacy of his father. He's thinking about protecting his family. You know what I mean? And yeah, keeping this farm, keeping this farm as a legacy. These mosquitoes. <laughs> I got one. Um, but keeping the farm as a legacy to remember his father by, you know, and also he mentioned in the previous episode that this is really all that he knows how to do. And he's not going to just let these people come in and run him out of his farm and run him out of this legacy that his father's left i'm saying legacy a lot am i not but yes i think that Bablamini is now still wanting the farm so he's going to organize probably another hit on bandile or organize another cattle raiding to really cripple him because now bandile owes him i'm hoping they still have that local money but if they do they still owe him the two million rand so that's a lot of money i think Bablamini is going to organize another cattle raid so that Bandile can get crippled even further, putting him in a more desperate position where he's in a place to reconsider and maybe even sell it for less this time. But I don't think Bandile is going to go down that easily, especially now that Nolwanle and the baby are gone. Bandile has nothing to lose now. His family, he knows, is safe. So I think we're going to start seeing a darker side to Bandile now. He is literally going to start going all out now. And that little violence we saw with Sofani and his crew at the beginning when he went and literally massacred that whole um, crew. I think we're going to see a lot more of that now because he's still looking for the top four guys. And he still wants an opportunity to protect his farm and end this war altogether. So I think we're really going to start seeing Bandile being that man now who is hunting, who's fighting a lot more, who is a lot more violent because also he doesn't have to worry about the safety of his family anymore. It's just him and Sisi. Okay, and then Tladi. I honestly don't know what's going on with this guy because I thought his life was going good. He's got his crew going. He's got um you know business going well. He's got his girl there, Nyakalo, with him. His dad is now part of the top four. They've basically replaced what Luru and Morito were in the cattle raiding world. So, I don't know why he's so hell-bent on getting Leruo killed, I would say. Because what else does it mean to go and spill the beans to Sise? And, I mean, we saw Moritlo literally and Leruo pack their bags up and they were like, Hey, these people are probably going to come back for us. And you saw what they did to Sifani. So, it's really something that I'm still trying to figure out why it is that he wants Leruo dead so badly. You know, and he's got that small boy, Musa, as well, working with him, who's feeding him all of this information. And Musa knows where Leroy and Sisle are. So we might actually see um, Tladi. We might actually start seeing Tladi putting Leroy and Moritlo at risk by feeding that information to Sisle and Bandile. I've realized that I forgot to include something very important, an observation that I made about the relationship between Sile and Luruo while watching this show over the past couple of episodes. You guys know how much I've been hating on this relationship because I just did not understand, or I don't understand how it is that Luruo 
and see if they actually fell in love. Okay, well, it makes sense on the rural side. I saw love at first sight, the time when they met at the hospital from his side. But on Sleeper's side, it just didn't make sense that you just meet a random guy at the hospital and all of a sudden you're willing to risk everything, your whole life that you've planned with your fiancé. You're willing to risk that over some stranger that you met at the hospital for what? It just didn't make sense to me. But over the past couple of episodes watching the story unfold, I have a theory. I don't know if you guys agree with me, disagree with me. What are your thoughts? But he, but here's my theory. Sikhe has always been the type of person whose life has always been planned out and things always go, go according to plan. I mean, she went to school, she became a doctor and she's amazing at her job. Her and Guanele have been dating since they were kids they have always been planning to be to get married since they were kids. And we saw in the very first episode of this show how that was coming to fruition. Their plans were going forth and everything was going according to plan when Guanella proposed and she said yes. Everybody was excited until Sisley's parents were brutally murdered at the Okabini farm raid. And I think it's this event that really shook and shifted Sisha's world and made her actually start to consider the fact that not everything in life that you plan goes according to plan. And I think she then, to guard herself, went on a journey of detaching or separating from her plans, right? So I think this is what set off her separation from Guanele. Because, I mean, I've been planning to be married to this man my whole life. What guarantee is there that this thing is going to work out? And now you introduce a man at that very same time that she's going through all of this. You introduce a man in the picture that is infatuated with her. You know, is pursuing her. You know, is becoming the new constant in her life because he's always around. Always showing up the same. And I think that's what made Sikhe gravitate towards Luruo. I think a sense or a spirit of spontaneity developed inside of Sikhe because she really wanted to move away from being that person whose life was always planned out because she's seen that things that are planned out don't always go the way you thought that they would. And yeah, I think that's what started this relationship with her and Luruo. But really what cemented it is when they crossed the lines and actually started an affair. And the fact that she's gone and basically turned her life upside down, broken up her marriage over this man, means that she needs to fight for this. Because to let the relationship with Leruo fail means that she has made a mistake. And I don't think Sile is willing to accept that she could have made a mistake. So I think that's why we've been seeing her pursue Leruo so much because it needs to work. And I think that's why we're seeing this relationship be so strong right now. That's my theory. That's my theory. I think this love didn't really start out as love. It started out as an escape from her life and who she, or the chains of who she's supposed to be, you know. And now that she's in it, it needs to work. It needs to work and Leruo is really that sort of safe space, well, was that safe space where she could really just go and be somebody else with him. So we'll see. We'll see how this thing turns out. I think um, based on what I was saying earlier about Sikhe wanting to make sure that this works out and not wanting it to fail because it would mean that she has made a mistake, a grave mistake at that. I think she will definitely be infuriated and want to make him pay. And I think Sikhe as well, we've seen Sikhe can handle a gun. We've seen that she's, you know, she can handle herself in tough situations. So it is possible that she might start going after Leruo. Yeah, guys, that's what I have. And I am so excited to see how the story unfolds. I am literally clued in every single week, ever since that whole plot twist with Bob Flamini.
which we spoke about in the last video, which was more than a month ago. I know, guys, I've been gone for a while, but this consistency thing is hard. So I don't want to give you guys promises. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.